In today's video, I'm going to show you all of the ways to get the Champion Scrolls and the most efficient ways to do so. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel for more content, and if you have any questions, make sure you leave a comment below and leave a like for the algorithm. Enjoy. In today's video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to get the Imp Champion Scroll in Old School RuneScape. To start off, the requirements, as usual, you need 32 quest points and to be on a member server, so don't be doing this on a free-to-play server, and actually, I don't even think you could, at least from this method, but just make sure you're in a member server with 32 quest points. It is highly recommended that you have a cannon and a magic or range weapon that has a quick tick speed. You can also use your graceful to paint on the level because imps do teleport, which is part of the reason why this is annoying. And it's also going to be helpful to have an Ardoin cloak from the Ardoin easy diaries, as well as the Xerix talisman. If you don't have one or the other of those, you can pick one of these two locations. I would suggest the Ardoin monastery, which brings me to my next point. The locations themselves are on Zaya, south of Asidius by the sand crabs. So you can either take the port serum boat and then run east you can take the Xerix Talisman Lookout and run east, or you can take the Hasidious Xerix Talisman and run south. You can also move your house portal if that's something you want to do. Teleport to your house, get out, and then run south. The other location is at the Ardoin Monastery, and the Ardoin Monastery itself is south of Ardoin, so you can either teleport to Ardoin is another method you could use, but that's going to take a lot of run energy, or you can just use your Ardoin Cloak, which teleports you right outside the monastery. And again, you only need the Ardoin easy diaries to be able to use this infinite amount of times so definitely recommend just hammering out the diary so the way this method is going to work is that in the mini map here you'll see that there's four different little bush trees here the dead bushes and the dead trees and there's also three dead trees over here on the mini map you kind of want to put your cannon in between both as you can see there's an imp there there's two imps there there's an imp down here and there's just a bunch of imps running around so what we're going to do quickly explain this method is we're going to put our cannon down we're going to teleport to the monastery where there's there's a bunch of other imps, but there's a lot of trees, so you can't really easily put your cannon down. And then while your cannon is killing imps here, you'll be killing imps at the monastery. You're going to have to come back every three minutes or so because untradeable items do despawn after three minutes. So you want to make sure that you're back here in time to make sure you didn't get a drop because it will not show up on your loot tab. We're going to go ahead and put down our cannon. And then as soon as this is done, we're going to go ahead and fill it up, fire it away. And then we are going to teleport to the monastery. And as you can see, we are getting range XP. And then we're going to run around here and kill a bunch of imps. The other thing I do suggest is having energy pots as well as stand pots, whichever ones that you have access to and whichever ones you want to use. I highly recommend those because you will be running around their head cut off. Again, there's a bunch of imps around here. And again, they do teleport. So you want something that you can easily kill them with, but something as well that shoots quickly in case you don't one shot them the first time. So imps are around this area. And they're also a little bit south of the monastery. They're a little bit north of the monastery. They can spawn in the monastery. They're basically wherever. But just around this general area, there are a bunch of imps. And they do have a pretty quick spawn rate. So keep that in mind as well. You should always be able to find an imp or see, I just killed that one, another one spawned. But while you're doing this, your cannon is still killing imps or monks and other things tragically over south of Hasidius. When it's been about two minutes or so, I would go ahead and teleport back using your Xerix Talisman, go to Xerix Glade, and then you're gonna wanna run south. See, three of them just spawned right there. And then you're going to run south using any of the methods that you have. And I will say this is the most efficient way to do it. It is one of the probably actually the most annoying champion scroll to get, but it is what it is. This is a nice way. So then you want to look kind of all around and see if you were able to get your champion clue scroll. It'll be basically kind of anywhere along the shore here. We're going to go ahead and smack that in. We're going to. Okay, good job, cannon. And then if you're not seeing it, again, go ahead and reload your cannon and just rinse and repeat. And this is what you will be doing for the next however many hours it takes you to get your champion scroll. Again, go ahead, put your cannons in the cannon, and then we would teleport back to the monastery. That is all there is to this method. This is the most efficient way. Like I said, if you don't have Xerix Talisman or you want to just stay in one spot, I recommend the Ardoin Monastery. They spawn quickly there. You don't have to worry about anything else happening. There's not a lot of people around. You can just go 
kill them there. If you're trying to be super ultra efficient, because this grind sucks and the quicker you get it done, the better, recommend this cannon spot and then go to Ardoin Monastery and kill them there. Again, a key thing, stamina pots or energy potions, depending on how quickly and how much you're running back and forth. You want to run back and forth every two minutes. Otherwise, that champion scroll could despawn and that would be terrible. The good news is you won't know that you got the drop, I don't think, because I don't think it'll pop up on your screen with the champion scroll unlocked unless, you know, if it's the first time you've gotten a drop, how there's that notification. I don't think it'll pop up, but I haven't tested it, so I'm not 100% sure. Just assume that it won't and double check so you're, you're not missing it. But worst comes to worst, you may not even know that you got the drop. Today's video is going to be a quick guide on how to get the Goblin Champion Scroll most efficiently. There aren't many requirements, you just need 32 quest points and to be on a member server, so don't be trying to do this on a free server showing off to all the free-to-play players. The equipment, the only thing you really need is a cannon, but honestly you don't need a cannon if you don't want, but a cannon really speeds this up. So recommended you have a cannon, and I will show you the cannon spot, that's where I'm standing right now. And other than that, any range gear or mage gear that shoots very, very quickly and you can get kills quick. They're goblins, let's be honest. They should be getting one hit and they don't have a lot of HP. So the location itself is located north west of Lumbridge and west of the windmill that you go to for Cook's Assistant. Easiest ways to get here are just a Draenor teleport from a Amulet of Glory and run north and then east or the Lumbridge teleport run north and then west and those are your easiest ways to get here. Right where I'm standing is where you're going to want to put your cannon. So we're going to go ahead and drop our cannon here. As you can see, I am using range right now, so I have a blowpipe because it's the fastest, and I have my assembler and a bunch of range gear, and this is all you need to do. That's it, just drop them. And again, you're gonna kill some farmers, it is what it is, but you'll go ahead and knock out some goblins as well. And that is it, that is literally all you need to do. You can either sit here, you can run around and help attack. I recommend doing that if you're trying to get the highest kills per hour, and this is it, this is all you have to do. The main thing is you don't really want to get attacked because it is not a multi-zone. So keep that in mind. If you're getting attacked by a goblin, that's not really helping your case too much. But they also die in basically one hit anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Again, if you're a lower level without a cannon, might be a problem. You'll need to just run up and melee them and smack them with the highest level thing you have. But that is all there is to it. You have a 1 in 5,000 chance of getting the champion clue scroll. And that is it for me. If you guys are interested in seeing the loot from video, I will be posting that later once I do get the Goblin Champion Scroll so you guys can see the loot. Again, you can see I'm not running around picking it up, but you can at least see what you could have gotten. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the most efficient way to get the Skeleton Champion Scroll. For requirements, you need 32 quest points as well as member server, and this is just for this method you need. And this is future Gary, I just wanted to make a small update. I thought you needed 40 agility, but actually you need 49 agility for this method. You also need a slash weapon in order to get to the nil agility dungeon. You need food depending on your level, and any style of weapon is totally fine. However, crush and magic are technically the best, but they're skeletons, so I mean their defenses really aren't that high anyway. And a cannon is highly recommended. There's not really a great spot to kill skeletons this is the best one that i found this is kind of the most chill way i guess you could say and i do also want to call out that it's not multi so keep that in mind as well so as you can see i have a melee setup and again i'm an iron man so it kind of looks like scuff so i got a fire cape fire torso uh dh plate legs some rune boots barrows gloves a whip a defender a ring of suffering and also helm of nays not where is the yanil agility dungeon it is north of Yanil for those of you guys that don't know. So there's a couple ways to get here. You can either teleport to Nightmare Zone using the game's teleport, the mini game teleport. You can also use a Ring of Dueling and run east. You can also use a Monastery teleport from the Ardoin Cloak and run south. Those are kind of the main ways to get here. And it is this little building right here. So again, we're going to go ahead and slash the web. Once the web is slashed, you can go ahead and run down the staircase. From the staircase, you will be met with bats. Go ahead and run over here. And there is this balancing ledge. Go ahead and cross that. And then right here in this little obstacle is where the skeletons are. Once you come in here, just go ahead and put down your cannon in the middle of the room. 
So we're going to actually move that because that was not great placement. Pick up, run over here to the middle of the room. Go ahead and place it down. And again, this is not multi, so in between kills, you're going to be able to get a few multi hits on your cannon. Other than that, it will just focus on the skeleton that you are currently on. So make sure that you can try to set the skeleton up to get double hits and you will be good to go. The other method you can do is you can also use prayer pots if that's something that you want to do. I don't really recommend it because it's kind of a waste of prayer pots when you're this close to the bank but you can do you. And then again, just kind of wait until the skeletons start attacking you and get in a nice spot so the cannon, when it comes around, will double shoot at the skeleton. And that's it. This is the method. Super easy, pretty chill. It's nice to sit in spots like this so you're able to get a double hit on things that are to your left and to your right. It just makes things a little easier because for those of you guys that don't know how the cannon works, the red squares are actually where the double hits will happen. So if you stand here, you just, now this one came over, so this one will now get double hit. It's just a nice way to gauge on how to get double hits and get the most out of your time. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the quickest and most efficient way to get the zombie champion scroll. Like other methods, you're going to need a a cannon. This method is also in the wilderness. So for example, I have some scuff gear right now that I'm wearing. I'm using range. I recommend using range, honestly anything. Like they're only like level 18 zombies, so it's not hard to kill them. But I will say, again, it's in the wilderness, so there is a chance you could die. Also, on top of that, make sure you bring a quick teleport out so you can't teleport out. If you get teleblocked, make sure you throw on protect from item, all that fun stuff. If you want to view what you potentially will lose on death in the wilderness, go ahead and go to your inventory, click on view items kept on death, do protect item and kill by player. This will show you everything that you will lose if you die in the wilderness. Also, assuming you're able to throw on protect item. So with that being said, I've seen a few people around my level. So I'm going to show you guys where this method actually is located. The Ferrex Enclave, which you can get here by a Ring of Dueling or run north from the Grand Exchange. The Graveyard of Shadows is where the zombies are located. So not very far away from the Ferrex Enclave. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and probably switch worlds because there's some people that are halfway close to my level running around here. And I feel like one of them is just going to absolutely murder me. So I'm going to switch to this 2k level and hope that people aren't chilling out here. The problem is, is that they did move a wilderness boss out to the graveyard. So really unfortunate. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and pass through the barrier. And again, it's just north up here. This is the graveyard. It is literally that easy to get to. And you'll see my cannon spot. Well, not even my cannon spot. There's literally a cannon location right here. And again, very, very easy to Iron Dragon Meadow, nice. Very, very easy to go ahead and drop your cannon here. Again, they're level 24, level 18, like they are not hard to kill. So again, it is multi, so it doesn't really matter if you're getting attacked, your cannon will still attack things. I do recommend to stick near your cannon because your cannon will run out of cannonballs very quickly. This method literally eats through cannonballs, so if that's a problem, yeah, good luck with that one. Make sure you go get your cannonballs. And that's literally all there is to it. It's nice and easy. Now, there there have been folks that have popped out of here. I had a person earlier pop out of here and try to PK me. I literally ran away and got my cannon later. Normally, people don't camp you if they see you're just doing this because you're probably not risking a lot. But, you know, there's always the people out there killing people for a spade. So it is what it is. Anyway, guys, very quick and efficient method. They don't really drop a lot. There's dark fishing bait, which you can use for your crabs and things like that. But other than that, like this kid, I don't trust, still don't trust, and I'm out of here. Like I, and just like that for the video, right? All right, so it's very unlikely that he's going to sit there and camp my cannon, but that is all there is to it. I recommend doing it when there's not a lot of folks around and it's not a very busy time of day. Doing it at 10 o'clock at night on a weekday, probably not the smartest idea because there's a lot of people out. That is the quickest way to be able to do that. There is another method and actually I can go ahead and show that real quick. It's not as it's not nearly as fast, like not even close, but it's in the bottom of the wizard's guild. 
66 magic in order to get into the Wizards Guild. I'll go back for my cannon later, it's fine. So you need ranging or magic gear for this. So here in Yanil, for those of you guys that don't know, is a Wizards Guild. Right here in Yanil, Wizards Guild. If you go down in the basement, there are zombies. And you are unable to get through the gate, so... The thing that you'll need is telegrab. So with my luck, I'm going to go ahead and get the champion scroll right here, and then I'm going to need to telegrab it. But this is another way, if you don't like the wilderness method, this is just another easy way that you can basically semi-AFK here. You do have to click, but I mean, and you can't bring your cannon down here. That's all I got. So I'm going to run back and get my cannon and hope that that man is still not there camping it. But again, I doubt he is. Normally people just run away after a minute or two of you not being there. Also, I've sat there for hundreds and hundreds of kills and I have had nobody show up. So honestly, again, it just depends on how lucky you are with the wilderness being busy, but it is what it is. Are you trying to farm giant keys or obtain your giant's champion scroll? Well, in today's video, I will show you the fastest way to get both of those items. The quickest way to kill hill giants is located a little bit to the southwest of the Shazian encampment, right here where I'm at. And this is over on Zeo, for those of you guys that don't know. So a quick way to get here is just using a fairy ring DJR or just using a Xerix talisman to the lookout and those are about your two fastest ways. That said, you may have to hop worlds a few times because this is a decently known method. You'll be using a cannon, and I'm also set up in range gear, so just kind of bring your best in slot range gears. Don't forget your Avas and things like that. It doesn't really matter too much what you have. I also recommend having a Ring of Wealth if you have access to one, just so you can pick up GP. You can also bring a Bone Crusher if you want for extra prayer XP, but it's up to you on whether you think that's a waste of your charges on your Bone Crusher or not, because it is just big bones. This isn't a multi-combat area, so you're going to want to not get hit by the hill giants in order to make this method the quickest it can be. You can get up to about 900 to 1,000 hill giant kills an hour here, and it's pretty semi-AFK unless there's a drop you want. That's about all there is to it. So again, I recommend having a longbow of sorts so that you can hit hill giants from far away. Other than that, just kind of your best slot range gear. I'm using void. All you got to do is run over here and just towards the middle you just want to go ahead and drop your cannon and again you're going to want to run to one of these safe spots that i show you because if you're getting hit again this is non-multi so as soon as you get hit the cannon will stop but you can run over here and just start attacking your hill giants and again if you use a longbow of any sort you're able to sit here and just kind of be safe so there's little spots along the edge here that you can be safe and then all you'll have to do is run over and fill up your cannon. And this is literally all there is to it. Uh, the other thing I do want to mention is that you want to be on long range, not necessarily rapid for this method as well. Uh, you can be on rapid if you want. Honestly, you can mess around with this method a little bit and just kind of do what you want. But long range gives you those extra tile or two that you need to potentially not run out of your safe spot. And again, you're just making sure that your cannon doesn't go to zero and that's it. And you just, you wait for your giant keys. You can get a bunch of giant keys. Ooh, Renar we drop. That's what you're looking for on an Iron Man. Again, you get about 900 to a thousand kills an hour and are able to get that giant champion scroll halfway quickly. I also do recommend bringing a gem bag and an herb sack as well, just so you're not running back and forth with inventories full of herbs and gems. You do want to pick them up and you don't really want to leave them on the ground but that's just a way to make sure that you don't have to waste your time by banking. If you do want to bank, you can also just run back up. There's a bank right here. So if you run northeast back to Shazine Encampment, the bank is right here and you can just run back. You can also leave your cannon here. So what I normally do is I go and I fill up the cannon. I run and go bank and then I run back here. And by that time, like I'm not really wasting any time because my cannon will just go ahead and still be hitting hill giants while I'm gone. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, guys, again, that's all there is to it. In today's video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to get the Hobgoblin Champion Scroll. The requirements to get the scroll are 32 quest points and to be on a member server. Make sure you are on a member server. Don't be that person. The equipment that is highly recommended is a cannon to make kills a lot quicker. And any combat style, it doesn't really matter. You can use whatever armor you want, any weapon you want 
to make this efficient as possible. And also you want to bring food depending on your level, but they aren't too high of level. They're only level 28. So that shouldn't really be an issue if you're a higher level and working on this grind. Also a reminder that champion scrolls are a one and a 5,000 drop. So if you think you're going dry, you legit just might be going dry. The drop rate is literally one in 5,000. The location that I am currently at is south of Balador. So you can use any of these shortcuts and run through the gate or just run under the wall, or you can just run south of Falador and follow the path to the west. It is to the west of the crafting guild on this little peninsula here. And you'll see there is a bunch of hobgoblins. So all you need to do is go ahead and drop your cannon. And I like to drop my cannon kind of in the middle here because then it allows it to hit a lot of these different hobgoblins. The other thing I do want to call out is this isn't a multi-area, unfortunately. So you will have to kind of position yourself and try to make it to where the cannon hits the hobgoblins twice in the area. But just keep that in mind. Let the cannon attack and try to stay away from the hobgoblins. So then the cannon will attack hobgoblins for longer because as soon as they start attacking you and hitting you, that's when your cannon's stops the multi. And other than that, that is basically all there is to it. Your cannon will tragically hit some cows every once in a while, but it is what it is. Sandwich lady really wants to give me a sandwich. Dismiss. And then just fill your cannon up and keep going from there. And that is all there is to it. Just stay here on the peninsula and just keep smacking hobgoblins. In today's video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to get the ghoul champion scroll in old school runescape. For those of you guys that don't know, this is a one in 5,000 drop chance. So don't get your hopes up that you'll be getting one before 5k but you might you never know or you may go way over drop rate who knows that said the requirements there aren't too much you just need 32 quest points and to be on a member server don't be doing this in a free server and i don't even think you can get here in a free server anyway so member server the other thing you need is completion of the quest priest in peril that is all there is for requirements i do have two locations for you one of them in my opinion is way better than the other but i'll show both because if i don't i'm gonna get flamed for it in the comment section like normal and for your equipment, a cannon is highly recommended. If you're not doing this with a cannon, then you are doing it wrong. Other than that, just any magic gear or range gear that has a quick fire rate. You can also bring it prayer pots for the second location if that's the place you want to hang out. It's more AFK, which is totally fine. I think the first place is also pretty AFK. So the first location is actually north of the Mortmire Swamp. So here's the Mortmire Swamp, and we are in the graveyard. To get here, you can either use a Slayer Ring to the Slayer Tower or a Fairy Ring, CKS. You can also use a Salve Graveyard Teleport. Those are basically your options. So once you're here, this will be the safe spot. So you're going to get to the graveyard and this will be the safe spot. There's the cross here and then the two graves here. The only way they can get here is if they directly follow you here. They will get stopped if they're a little bit to the left here and a little bit to the right. So that's why it's great. For your cannon, just run over to the other side. Go ahead and place your cannon. Make sure it's in a spot that actually makes sense. There we go. You want to make sure that it gets those double hit markers. And for those of you guys that don't know, if you're using rune light, the red spots are where people can get hit twice. So after you place your cannon, go ahead and run to your safe spot. And like I said, they get stuck there. And that is all there is to it. Currently, I am at 1200 KC and no ghoul scroll. So hopefully we get that during the video. But if not, this is all you get to do. Highly recommend to use a long range attack. So for example, on the blowpipe, I would choose the long range so that way I can fire my darts further and it just makes it easier. I don't get it out of the safe spot. And like you see, if I was trying to attack that one, if I wasn't on long range, I would have to run out. And then of course, when your cannon goes down and gets low, make sure to refill your cannon. I do want to point out, this is not a multi-zone. So you're not able to, if you're getting attacked by a ghoul, your cannon won't attack other ghouls. So just keep that in mind. Again, this is my favorite spot, and in my opinion, the best spot, but some of you guys have other opinions. So we will go ahead to the second spot. We are at the second spot, and the second spot is just south of the Slayer Tower. Again, you can use all the same teleports to get here, and this is where you are on the map just south of the slayer tower now highly recommend that you put your cannon down in the spot that i have marked just because it seems to pick up the most amount of ghouls and then you'll also just want to stand on the other 
tile that I have marked. So you don't want to be directly in the spot because again, that double hit chance if they're standing within these red squares whenever you place your cannon down, if you're on rune light. Again, this is also not multi, so you're not going to be able to use your cannon as efficiently in my opinion, which is why I like the other spot because you can AFK, still smack things, but the ghouls will be able to just keep aggroing you and attacking you. And if you have on auto retaliate, you can just sit here and it's totally fine. Again, personally, I like the other spot better, but here's the spot in case you guys like this one better. And that is it. Again, it's a one in 5,000 drop rate. So keep that in mind. If you don't get it after 5,000, your game is not broken. You're just unlocking. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the quickest way to get the Earth Warrior Champion Scroll in RuneScape. To start off, this will be in the wilderness. It'll be around level seven. Just bring armor that you don't want to lose. That's why I'm in this kind of scuffed setup. I have a blowpipe. I have some ranging gear. It doesn't really matter what gear you want to use. So that's up to you on what you want to risk losing. Although again, it's only like level seven. So you don't have that high risk of getting PK'd, but this is also the only place that Earth Warriors exist. So take it how you want it. You can also use ranged or magic for this method. This is not in a multi-combat zone. So for that reason, I'm going to be using range. You can also use magic. If you're using melee, you're not really going to get the giant benefit of having a cannon, which I'm going to be using a cannon for this method. The other thing that you want is a looting bag if you want to stay down there for a super long time and some food to start out. Again, if you're using the safe spot in range or mage, you're not really gonna take a lot of damage. If you're using melee, you may take a little bit more damage. And also they do become unaggressive after about 10 minutes. So just keep that in mind. This is future Roland. I do also want to say that because you're only in like level seven wilderness, you can actually bring a quick teleport. So if you have a ring of dueling, mythic cape, or you know, Amulet of Glory, anything that you can quick teleport out of, you can use that quick teleport because you're in such low wilderness. So keep that in mind. If a PKer shows up and you want to get out, go back for your cannon later. Normally they won't sit there and camp your cannon for however. First things first is you want to start in Edgeville or, you know, I guess anywhere close. We're going to be going into the Edgeville dungeon. And then once we are at the Edgeville dungeon, it'll put you in this location. And then all you got to do is go north and then east and then north again. And then there's the monkey bars here that require level 15 agility. So if you do not have 15 agility, you cannot do this method. And then the earth warriors are right up here. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I've done this method a little bit and nobody has really disturbed me doing it. I've also, I haven't crashed anybody, but I've went across the monkey bars and there's been people there. So, you know, people don't just instantly PK you. I just let them know that I'm going to hop and normally it's all good. If somebody shows up and they look like they're in PK gear, throw on your protect from item and try to get out of there, but you may not make it. So just, you know, again, it's in the wilderness. Be safe. Don't be, you know, don't bring stuff out here. You don't want to lose. But for those of you guys that don't know, you can just go to the equipment section of your menu, and then you can go to you keep items on death. So here are the monkey bars again, just north of the gate, past the red spiders. And you can see there's actually a cannon spot there already, and it doesn't look like there's anybody here. So we're going to go ahead and set our cannon up. So you just need to run up here, throw down your cannon. And then once you throw it on your cannon, we're actually going to be running it back over here. So go ahead, throw that in, start the fire. And the spot is right here in between the torch and the rock. And as you'll notice, this one gets stuck on the rock. I don't know why it just doesn't walk around the rock. Apparently things are hard. The other cool thing about this is the cannon will actually attack the second one. Normally, I don't know why it didn't do it that time. Okay, cannon. Hello. That was weird. Maybe it will it, it does attack things in this room so maybe it's just being a little there it is <laughs> I don't, I, it makes no sense to me but as you can see so basically with this safe spot it attacks everybody in this room and it helps you with these guys in this room and that is literally all there is to it again after 10 minutes they become unaggressive and they do drop some runes and things like that. They drop some herbs, but I will be doing a full loot video. And there is also one troll earth warrior that does like to run away and kind of drift towards the back. So that's the only annoying part you're going to have here. Other than that, it's pretty simple. It's pretty chill. Just watch your back for PKers. Again, normally they don't show up. And when they do show up, 
people are just trying to kill Earth Warriors anyway, so nine times out of 10, they're just here to do the same thing that you're doing. In today's video, I'm doing a quick guide on how to get the Joger Champion Scrolls quickly and most efficiently. The things that you'll need is a cannon and some cannonballs and a way to get to Karamja. We're gonna be going to Pothole Dungeon, which is right here. It's also called the Joger Dungeon. There's a few different ways to get to Karamja. You can either use the Fairy Ring CKR or you can use the Amulet of Glory. You can also take a charter ship or you could use the Karamja Hard Diary Gloves and go to Shiloh. There's a bunch of ways to get here. So however you want to get here. I personally am going to be using the Amulet of Glory and the Grapple to get across the river and then I'm gonna to go to the Joker dungeon. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. First, you can also use whatever combat style you want. You can either use melee or range or magic if you really want to. It really doesn't matter. Your cannon will kill these extremely quickly, assuming that you have a decent range level. And also the defense bonus for Jogers don't really exist, so it's really not that bad. You can also bring some food as well and then a teleportation method out. Personally, I'm just staying down there till I either get the scroll or until I get a medium clue scroll and then I'm gonna do the clue scroll and then come back. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and use my teleport to Karamja, which again is the Amulet of Glory is what I'm using. And then from here, we're just gonna go ahead and run south. I'm gonna go ahead and equip my crossbow and my grapple. Like I said, you can use any combat style that you want. I personally am using range because I have a blowpipe, so that is just gonna have speed kills up super quickly. But you can use literally whatever you want. If you wanna use melee, go for melee. You want to get your mage up feel free to mage things down and again the great thing about using the grapple is that the dungeon is literally just over here so we will get back out our blowpipe throw on our fury and the other thing is when you get to the dungeon you're we're going to be going to the upper level the bottom level is not actually multi you may have to try to find a safe spot if you're trying to do the lower dungeon but i don't know why you would because you can easily just use the upper dungeon. And right here again is the dungeon. Go ahead and show you on the minimap. This is where we're at. So we're gonna go ahead and enter the cave. And then there's this little staircase right here when you get in. All you gotta do is run up and if you'll notice, multi comes up. You're gonna go ahead, run over here towards the middle, throw your cannon down. And just like that, you are good to go. You can test out different cannon spots, like this cannon spot actually isn't the best, so we're gonna go ahead and pick that up and kind of move it up a little bit here. Hopefully we can get a better cannon spot. There we go, that should be a better cannon spot. We're just gonna go ahead, fire away. And again, like I said, this is multi, so you can just sit here and just murder jokers. It's pretty great. They don't drop too much in terms of anything super useful. I pick up the trading sticks just because. I don't know when I'll need them on an Iron Man. I probably won't need them, but in case I need them, I'd be really annoyed if I went through all this work and then didn't pick them up and need them later. So they also do drop some seeds and other things like that. I will be doing a loot video in the future to show you guys all the loot that I've gotten from Jogers, and that is literally all there is to it. In today's video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way to get the Lesser Demon Champion Scroll in Old School RuneScape. Those of you guys that don't know, the Champion Scrolls are a 1 in 5,000 drop, so keep that in mind when you're going dry that it's just a really low drop chance. The requirements you need, just like all the other ones, 32 quest points and to be on a member server and the ability to get to Karamjo. That's basically it. That said, the location of the lesser demons. Again, you need to get to Karamja, to the Karamja dungeon. So you can either do that by taking a boat from Port Serum. You can also use your Amulet of Glory teleport, or you can use the Shiloh Village teleport, or a boat from Ardoin. There's a lot of ways to get here, so just pick the one that that best fits you. After you're here, make sure you go to the volcano where all the lava is and go down to the Karamja dungeon. And once you are here, where the skeletons are is where you come in. Just go north and then go a little bit west and then south and you are right here at the lesser demons. I do also want to call out that the Tazar city is right here where you get your fire cape and there is a bank right in here. Once you go inside, make sure that you go to the west. And if you guys can see here in the top 
corner, that is where the entrance to the city is, for those of you guys that don't know, and it's your first time down here. After that, it's highly recommended that you use your cannon. You also use mage gear, since they are weak to mage, but you can also use range if you're a higher level. It honestly doesn't really matter too much. If you're a lower level, I would stick to mage and bring some food along as well, so when you're refilling your cannon and you get smacked, it's fine. I will show you the most efficient safe spots as well. With that said, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to run up here, throw down my cannon. And it doesn't have to be in the exact spot where the cannon says. You just want to make sure it's efficient in the way that it's kind of laid out. So this one isn't really, but you could sit here forever and just kind of mess with it. Just find the spot that works for you. Now, the first safe spot I want to show you is actually down where I was standing before, and this is the most efficient safe spot. I have no idea, but it looks like there's an invisible wall like right here. I do also want to call out one, don't forget to buy your cannon and two, that this is also not a multi-spot area. Since it's not multi, if you're getting attacked by one of the lesser demons, your cannon will not attack. Again, I have no idea why, but there is like an invisible wall here and it just makes it super easy to safe spot. This is the main one that I would use and highly recommend. This is the other safe spot. You're just kind of in a corner over here by yourself. I don't really recommend using this one, but let me see if I can get the attention of one of these lesser demons, but they all may be stuck on my cannon. Oh, here we go. Yeah, come over here and don't die to the cannon. Don't die to the cannon. No. All right, clutch. So again, here is also another safe spot if you really just, you know, either one works. I like the other one because you're able to attack more lesser demons, but I just wanted to show this one just in case. And that is all there is to killing lesser demons. Very easy, very simple, nice and AFK, some good magic XP. And again, good luck on your one to 5,000 champion score grind. With that said, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. I will always answer those. Leave a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Turn up the summer vibes. Get off your phone one time, would you come outside? Cause we all here chillin'. Yeah, it's the same, all same, all same. No, we don't play, no play, no games. All they wanna talk, 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 talk. Why they gonna hate on, hate on me? Damn. But I ain't not trippin'. I'm fly as a pigeon. This girl's been eyeing the kid.